Uddhavachana, an anthology of Dhamma, revealing the hidden. Volume 9, Dhamma Primer. Kama and results from deeds. Kama should be understood. It is volition, Pikus, that I call Kama. For having willed, one acts by body, speech, or mind. And what is the source and origin of Kama? Contact is its source and origin. And what is the diversity of Kama? There is Kama to be experienced in hell. There is Kama to be experienced in the animal realm. There is Kama to be experienced in the realm of afflicted spirits. There is Kama to be experienced in human world. And there is Kama to be experienced in the Deva world. This is called the diversity of Kama. And what is the result of Kama? The result of Kama, I say, is threefold. To be experienced in this very life, or in the next rebirth, or on some subsequent occasion, this is called the result of Kama. And what, Pikus, is the cessation of Kama? With the cessation of contact, there is cessation of Kama. This noble eightfold path is the way leading to the cessation of Kama. Namely, right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This body is old comma. Pikus, this body is not yours, nor does it belong to others. It is old comma, to be seen as generated and fashioned by volition as something to be felt. Therein, bhikkhus, the instructed noble disciple attends carefully and closely to dependent origination itself. Thus, when this exists, that comes to be. With the arising of this, that arises. When this does not exist, that does not come to be. With the cessation of this, that ceases. That is, with ignorance's condition, volitional formations come to be. With volitional formations as condition, consciousness. With consciousness as condition, name and form. With name and form as condition, the sixth sense basis. With the sixth sense basis as condition, contact. With contact as condition, feeling. With feeling as condition, craving. With craving as condition, clinging. With clinging as condition, existence. With existence as condition, birth. With birth as condition, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and despair come to be. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. But with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance comes cessation of volitional formations. With the cessation of volitional formation comes cessation of consciousness. With cessation of consciousness comes cessation of name and form. With cessation of name and form comes the cessation of the six sense bases. With the cessation of the six sense bases comes cessation of contact. With cessation of contact comes cessation of feeling. With cessation of feeling comes cessation of craving. With cessation of craving comes cessation of clinging. With cessation of clinging comes cessation of existence. With cessation of existence comes cessation of birth. With the cessation of birth, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure and despair cease. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. The Five Precepts Panatipata Veramani Abandoning the taking of life, he dwells refraining from taking life. Without stick or sword, 
scrupulous, compassionate, trembling for the welfare of all living beings. Atinatana Veramani Abandoning the taking of what is not given, living purely, accepting what is given, awaiting what is given, without stealing. Kame Sumichajara Veramani Having abandoned sexual misconduct, he abstains from sexual misconduct. He does not have sexual relations with women who are protected by their mother, father, mother and father, brother, sister, or relatives, who are protective by their dhamma, who have a husband, whose violation entails a penalty, or even with one already engaged. Musawata Veramani Abandoning false speech, he dwells refraining from false speech, a truth speaker, one to be relied on, trustworthy, dependable, not a deceiver of the world. Veramani To refrain from taking strong drink and sloth producing drugs. A great gift. Pikus, here a noble disciple, having abandoned the destruction of life, abstains from the destruction of life. By abstaining from the destruction of life, the noble disciple gives to an immeasurable number of beings freedom from fear, enmity, and affliction. He himself, in turn, enjoys immeasurable freedom from fear, enmity, and affliction. This is the first gift, a great gift, primal, of long standing, traditional, ancient, unadulterated, and never before adulterated, which is not being adulterated and will not be adulterated, not repudiated by wise ascetics and pramines. This is the stream of merit. Stream of the wholesome nutriment of happiness, heavenly, ripening in happiness, conducive to heaven, that leads to what is wished for, desired, and agreeable, to one's welfare and happiness. The four other precepts, which are abstaining from taking of what is not given, abstaining from sexual misconduct, abstaining from lying, and abstaining from consuming intoxicants are the repetitions of the Buddha's repertory of instructions. There are, Pikus, these five gifts, great gifts, primal, of long standing, traditional, ancient, unadulterated, and never before adulterated, which are not being adulterated and will not be adulterated, not repudiated by wise ascetics and Brahmins. The Upasata precepts. Anatipata Veramani. I too shall abandon and abstain from the destruction of life, with the rod and weapon laid aside. Consensuous and kindly, I too shall dwell compassionate toward all living beings. Atinatana Veramani. I too shall abandon and abstain from taking what is not given. I shall accept only what is given. Expect only what is given. And be honest at heart, devoid of theft. Aprammacharya Veramani I too shall abandon sexual activity and observe celibacy, living apart, abstaining from sexual intercourse, the common person's practice. Musawata Veramani I too shall abandon and abstain from false speech. I shall be a speaker of truth, an adherent of truth, trustworthy and reliable, no deceiver of the world. 
สุราเมรยะมัชชะประมาทัฐานาเวรมณี I too shall abandon and abstain from liquor, wine, and intoxicants, the basis for heedlessness. วิกาลโภชนาเวรมณี I too shall eat once a day, abstaining from eating at night and from food outside the proper time. นัจจคีตะวาทิตะวิสุกทัศนาเวรมณี I too shall abstain from dancing, singing, instrumental music, and unsuitable shows, and from adorning and beautifying myself by wearing garlands and applying scents and unguents. อุจจาสยนะมหาสยนาเวรมณี I too shall abandon and abstain from the use of high and luxurious beds. I shall lie down on a low resting place, either a small bed or a straw mat. Ten courses of unwholesome kama. Impurity by body, kunda, is threefold. Impurity by speech is fourfold. Impurity by mind is threefold. And how kunda? Is impurity by body threefold. Here, someone destroys life. He is murderous, bloody-handed, given to blows and violence, merciless to living beings. He takes what is not given. He steals the wealth and property of others in the village or forest. He engages in sexual misconduct. He has sexual relations with women. Who are protected by their mother, father, mother and father, brother, sister, or relatives, who are protected by their dhamma, who have a husband, whose violation entails a penalty, or even with one already engaged. It is in this way that impurity by body is threefold. And how kunda is impurity by speech fourfold? Here, someone speaks falsehood. If he is summoned to a council, to an assembly, to his relative's presence, to his guild, or to the court, and questioned as a witness, thus: "So, good man, tell what you know." Then, not knowing, he says, "I know," or knowing, he says, "I do not know." Not seeing, he says. I see, or seeing, he says, I do not see. Thus, he consciously speaks falsehood, for his own ends, or for another's ends, or for some trifling worldly end. He speaks diversively, having heard something here, he repeats it elsewhere in order to divide those people from these, or having heard something elsewhere. He repeats it to these people in order to divide them from those. Thus, he is one who divides those who are united, a creator of divisions, one who enjoys factions, rejoices in factions, delights in factions, a speaker of words that create factions. He speaks harshly. He utters such words as are rough. Hard, hurtful to others, offensive to others, bordering on anger, unconductive to concentration. He indulges in idle chatter. He speaks at an improper time, speaks falsely, speaks what is unbeneficial, speaks contrary to the Dhamma and the discipline. At an improper time, he speaks such words as are worthless, unreasonable. Rambling and unbeneficial. It is in this way that impurity by speech is fourfold, and how kunda is impurity by mind threefold. Here, someone is full of longing. He longs for the wealth and property of others. Thus, oh, may what belongs to another be mine. He has a mind of ill will 
and intentions of hate. Thus, may these beings be slain, slaughtered, cut off, destroyed, or annihilated. He holds wrong view and has an incorrect perspective thus. There is nothing given, nothing sacrificed, nothing offered. There is no fruit or result of good and bad actions. There is no this world, no other world. There is no mother, no father. There are no beings spontaneously reborn. They are in the world no ascetics and brahmins of right conduct and right practice who, having realized this world and the other world for themselves by direct knowledge, make them known to others. It is in this way that impurity by mind is threefold. These, Kunda, are the ten courses of unwholesome karma. It is because people engage in these ten courses of unwholesome karma that hell, the animal realm, the sphere of afflicted spirits, and other bad destinations are seen. Ten Courses of Wholesome Kama Purity by body, Kunda, is threefold. Purity by speech is fourfold. Purity by mind is threefold. And how, Kunda, is purity by body threefold? Here, someone having abandoned the destruction of life abstains from the destruction of life. With the rod and weapon laid aside, Consentious and kindly, he dwells compassionate toward all living beings. Having abandoned the taking of what is not given, he abstains from taking what is not given. He does not steal the wealth and property of others in the village or in the forest. Having abandoned sexual misconduct, he abstains from sexual misconduct. He does not have sexual relations with women who are protected by their mother, father, mother and father, brother, sister, or relatives who are protected by their dharma, who have a husband, whose violation entails a penalty, or even with one already engaged. It is in this way that purity by body is threefold. And how kunda is purity by speech fourfold? Here, someone having abandoned false speech abstains from false speech. If he is summoned to a council, to an assembly, to his relative's presence, to his guild, or to the court and question as a witness thus, So, good man, tell what you know. Then, not knowing, he says, I do not know. Or knowing, he says, I know. Not seeing, he says, I do not see. Or seeing, he says, I see. Thus he does not consciously speak falsehood for his own ends, or for another's ends, or for some trifling worldly end. Having abandoned diversive speech, he abstains from diversive speech. Having heard something here, he does not repeat it elsewhere in order to divide those people from these. Or having heard something elsewhere, he does not repeat it to these people in order to divide them from those. Thus he is one who reunites those who are divided, a promoter of unity, who enjoys concord, rejoices in concord, delights in concord, a speaker of words that promote concord. Having abandoned harsh speech, he abstains from harsh speech. He speaks such words as are gentle, pleasing to the ear, and lovable, as go to the heart, are courteous, desired by many, and agreeable to many. Having abandoned idle chatter, he abstains from idle chatter. He speaks at a proper time, speaks truth, speaks what is beneficial, speaks on the Dhamma and the discipline, at a proper time, he speaks such words as are worth recording, reasonable, succinct, and beneficial. It is in this way 
that purity by speech is fourfold. And how, Kuna, is purity by mind threefold? Here, someone is without longing. He does not long for the wealth and property of others. Thus, O oh, may what belongs to another be mine. He is of good will, and his intentions are free of hate thus. May these beings live happily, free from enmity, affliction, and anxiety. He holds right view and has a corrective perspective thus. There is what is given, sacrificed, and offered. There is fruit and result of good and bad actions. There is this world and the other world. There is mother and father. There are beings spontaneously reborn. There are in the world ascetics and Brahmins of right conduct and right practice, who having realized this world and the other world for themselves by direct knowledge, make them known to others. It is in this way that purity of mind is threefold. These kunda are the ten courses of wholesome kama. It is because people engage in these ten courses of wholesome kama that the divas, human beings, and other good destinations are seen. The Benefits from Dwelling Possessed of Virtue Pikus Dwell possessed of virtue, possessed of the patimok, restrained with the restraint of the patimok, perfect in conduct and resort, and seeing fear in the slightest fault, trained by undertaking the training precepts. If a piku should wish, may I be dear and agreeable to my companions in the holy life, respected and esteemed by them. Let him fulfill the precepts, be devoted to internal serenity of mind, not neglect meditation, be possessed of insight and dwell in empty huts. If a piku should wish, may I be one to obtain robes, alms food, resting place, and medicinal requisites. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may the services of those whose robes, alms food, resting place, and medicinal requisites I use bring them great fruit and benefit. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, when my kinsmen and relatives who have passed away and died remember me with confidence in their minds, may that bring them great fruit and great benefit. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I become a conqueror of discontent and delight and may discontent and delight not conquer me. May I abide transcending discontent and delight whenever they arise. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I become a conqueror of fear and dread, and may fear and dread not conquer me. May I abide transcending fear and dread Whenever they arise, let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I become one to obtain at will, without trouble or difficulty, the four shanas that constitute the higher mind and provide a pleasant abiding here and now. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I with the destruction of three fetters, become a stream enterer, no longer subject to perdition, bound for deliverance, headed for enlightenment. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I, with the destruction of three fetters, and with the attenuation of lust, hate, and delusion, become a once returner returning once to this world to make an end of suffering. Let him fulfill the precepts. 
If a piku should wish, may I, with the destruction of the five lower fetters, become due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes, and there attain final Nibbana, without ever returning from that world. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I wield the various kinds of supernormal power. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I, with the divine ear element, which is purified and surpasses the human, let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I understand the minds of other beings, of other persons, having encompassed them with my own mind, let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I recollect my manifold past lives, let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I, with the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, see beings passing away and reappearing. Let him fulfill the precepts. If a piku should wish, may I, by realizing for myself with direct knowledge here and now, enter upon and abide in the deliverance of mind and deliverance by wisdom that are taintless with the destruction of the taints let him fulfill the precepts. Be devoted to internal serenity of mind. Not neglect meditation. Be possessed of insight and dwell in empty huts. So it was the reference to this that it was said. Pikus, dwell possessed of virtue, possessed of patimok, restrained with the restraint of the patimok, perfect in conduct and resort, in seeing fear in the slightest fault, trained by undertaking the training precepts. To obtain a straight destination and rebirth. Pikus. Beings are the owners of their kama, the heirs of their kama. They have kama as their origin, kama as their relative. Kama as their resort. Whatever kama they do, good or bad, they are its heirs. Here, having abandoned the destruction of life, someone abstains from the destruction of life. With the rod and weapon laid aside, conscientious and kindly, he dwells compassionate toward all living beings. He does not creep along by body speech, and mind. His bodily comma is straight. His verbal comma is straight. His mental comma is straight. His destination is straight. His rebirth is straight. But for one with a straight destination and rebirth, I say, there is one of two destinations, either the exclusively pleasant heavens or eminent families, such as those of affluent katyas, affluent pramines, or affluent householders, families that are rich, with great wealth and property, abundant gold and silver, abundant treasures and belongings, abundant wealth and grain. Thus a being is reborn from a being. One is reborn through one's deeds. When one has been reborn, contacts affect one. It is in this way, I say, that beings are the heirs of their comma. The cases of someone abstains from taking what is not given, and someone abstains from sexual misconduct, are expounded in repetitions as the above sutta of someone abstains from destruction of life. At minimum conducive deeds. Pikus, the destruction of life repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. 
For one reborn as human being, the destruction of life at minimum conduces to a short lifespan. Taking what is not given, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as a human being, taking what is not given, at minimum, conduces to loss of wealth. Sexual misconduct, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as a human being, sexual misconduct, at minimum, conduces to enmity and rivalry. False speech, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as a human being, false speech, at minimum, conduces to false accusations. Divisive speech, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as a human being, divisive speech at minimum conduces to being divided from one's friends. Harsh speech, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as a human being, harsh speech, at minimum, conduces to disagreeable sounds. Idle chatter, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as a human being, idle chatter, at minimum, conduces to others, distrusting one's words. Drinking liquor and wine, repeatedly pursued, developed, and cultivated, is conducive to hell, to the animal realm, and to the sphere of afflicted spirits. For one reborn as human beings, drinking liquor and wine, at minimum, conduces to madness. Reappear in a happy destination. But here, student, some man or woman abandoning the killing of living beings, abstains from killing living beings, with rod and weapon laid aside, gentle and kindly. He abides compassionate to all living beings. Because of performing and undertaking such actions on the dissolution of the body, after death, he reappears in a happy destination, even in the heavenly world. But if on the dissolution of the body, after death, he does not reappear in a happy destination in the heavenly world, but instead comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is long lived. But here, student, some man or woman is not given to injuring beings with the hand, with a clod, with a stick, or with a knife. Because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination in the heavenly world. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is healthy. But here, student, some man or woman gives food, drink, clothing, carriages, garlands, scents, unguents, beds, dwelling, and lamps to recluses or pramines. Because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination in the heavenly world. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is wealthy. But here, student, some man or woman is not of an angry and irritable character, even when criticized a little, 
He is not offended, does not become angry, hostile, and resentful, and does not display anger, hate, and bitterness. Because performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination in the heavenly world. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is beautiful. But here, student, some man or woman is not envious, one who does not envy, resent, or begrudge the gains, honor, respect, reverence, salutations, and veneration received by others. Because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination in the heavenly world. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is influential. But here, student, some man or woman is not obstinate and arrogant. He pays homage to one who should receive homage, rises up for one in whose presence he should rise up, offers a seat to one who deserves a seat, makes way for one for whom he should make way, and honors, respects, reveres, and venerates one who should be honored, respected, revered, and venerated. Because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination in the heavenly world. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is highborn. But here, student, some man or woman visits a recluse or a promene and asks, Venerable Sir, what is wholesome? What kind of action will lead to my welfare and happiness for a long time? Because of performing and undertaking such action on the dissolution of the body after death, he reappears in a happy destination in the heavenly world. But if instead he comes back to the human state, then wherever he is reborn, he is wise. Eight Worldly Conditions Gain and Loss Disrepute and Fame Blame and Praise Pleasure and Pain These conditions that people meet are impermanent, transient, and subject to change. A wise and mindful person knows them and sees that they are subject to change. Desirable conditions don't excite his mind, nor is he repelled by undesirable conditions. The Fruit of Three Kinds of Deeds Having cultivated for seven years a mind of loving kindness, for seven eons of contraction and expansion, I did not return to this world. Whenever the eon contracted, I reached the plane of streaming radiance, and when the eon expanded, I arose in an empty divine mansion. But there I was Prama, the great Prama, the unvanquished victor, the all-seeing, the all-powerful. Thirty-six times I was Saka, ruler of the Divas. And many hundreds of times I was a wheel-turning monarch, righteous, a king of righteousness, conqueror of the four reigns of earth, maintaining stability in the land, in possession of the seven treasures. What need is there to speak of mere local kingship? It occurred to me, monks, to wonder, of what kind of deed of mine is this the fruit? Of what deeds ripening am I now of such great accomplishment and power? Then it occurred to me, it is the fruit of three kinds of deeds of mine, the ripening of these three kinds of deeds, that I am now of such great accomplishment and power. Deeds of giving, of self-mastery, 
and of refraining. An unsurpassed field of merit for the world. Pikus. These eight persons are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of reverential salutation, an unsurpassed field of merit for the world. What eight? The stream enterer, the one practicing for realization of the fruit of stream entry. The once returner, the one practicing for realization of the fruit of once returning. The non-returner, the one practicing for realization of the fruit of non-returning. The arahant, the one practicing for realization of the fruit of arahantship. These eight persons, Pikus, are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of reverential salutation, an unsurpassed field of merit for the world. The four practicing the way and the four established in the fruit. This is the upright Sangha, composed in wisdom and virtuous behavior. For people intend on sacrifice, for living beings seeking merit, making merit that ripens in the acquisitions. What is given to the Sangha bears great fruit. People who generate much merit. Pikus. Whenever virtuous monastic come to a home, the people there generate much merit on five grounds. What five? One, when people see virtuous monastics come to their home and they arouse hearts of confidence toward them, on that occasion that family is practicing the way conducive to heaven. Two, when people rise, pay homage, and offer a seat to virtuous monastics who come to their home, on that occasion that family is practicing the way conducive to birth in high families. 3. When people remove the stain of miserliness towards virtuous monastics who come to their home, on that occasion that family is practicing the way conducive to great influence. 4. When according to their means, people share what they have with virtuous monastics who come to their home, on that occasion that family is practicing the way conducive to great wealth. 5. When people question virtuous monastics who come to their home, make inquiries about the teachings, and listen to the Dhamma, on that occasion that family is practicing the way conducive to great wisdom. Pikus. Whenever virtuous monastics come to a home, the people there generate much merit on these five grounds. <laughs>